The reason why I oppose this bill is because I do not believe that Parliament should give government an alibi for confiscating from 200,000 plus people sums of between 340 and £810 which they have illegally kept from them. And let's be clear, that is what we are being asked to do by this retrospective legislation. The government has broken the law. It has broken the law in a way which impacts individual citizens. It has disrespected the rights of individual citizens and it is now asking Parliament to say, carry on doing it. And I do not believe that Parliament should do that. It is a fundamental issue of civil liberties, of human rights and of good governance. And for that reason, I'm not going to abstain. Uh, I will be opposing this legislation, not because of the content. And when ministers say, oh, people knew, actually, let's be completely clear about what the regulations that they have been found in breach of say. Regulation 4 says that the notice which people who are sanctioned receives must speci specify that the claimant is required to participate in the scheme the day on which participation will start, details of what the claimant is required to do by way of participation in the scheme, that the requirement to participate in the scheme will continue until the claimant is given notice by the Secretary of State that the claimant's participation is no longer required, or the claimant's award of job seekers allowance terminates, whichever is the earlier. And finally, information about the consequences of failing to participate in the scheme. If this had been a situation, and I know my council's been in this situation, where they put parking regulations in place, yeah. they were challenged, and people went to court and challenged those parking regulations, and they were found to be invalid. If this was a debate on that, and retrospectively uh, asking to sanction, in effect, sanctions, or in parking regulation terms, retrospectively allow people um, to, or force people to pay uh, parking penalties, which actually at the time they were incurred had been unlawful, then I think those benches opposite, both the Lib Dem benches and the Tory benches here, would be packed full of people exactly. saying how unfair this was. The judgment basically said the government acted unlawfully. And what I'm surprised at is that there has been no word of apology from the Minister. Not a single word that we got this wrong and therefore we apologise to the House. This is not a technical matter. This is not a technical issue. What's happened, let's be clear what the judgment said, the Secretary of State acted beyond the powers, failed to provide the details of workfare schemes within the regulations, bypassed par Parliament by introducing this umbrella scheme, the Employment and Skills Enterprise Scheme. It's not, a, it's not a technicality. In fact, let me just quote from the judgment from Lord Justice Stanley Burton. He basically said, any scheme, the loss of job seekers, sorry, let me start again. He said, there is a constitutional issue involved. The loss of job seekers allowance may result in considerable personal hardship. It's not surprising that Parliament should have been careful, should have been careful in making provision for the circumstances in which the sanctions may be imposed. So what resulted in that, this is a fundamental constitutional issue. It meant that the government tried to slide through Parliament without adequate consideration, regulations that would eventually deprive our constituents of significant sums of money. So what the decision has made is that the government has, let's be clear, has unlawfully required tens of thousands of people to work without pay. And then secondly, if they've said no, it's stripped them unlawfully of a significant amount of their benefits. Now, I, I, I quote from what the public interest lawyers actually said, uh, what they think, it, who took the case. And they, I agree with what they said. They said, that, look, there's basic requirements of fairness. And that, uh, they, those basic requirements are usually dictated by Parliament. So it means uh, the basic requirements of fairness on anything like these regulations is, first of all, providing people with a clear explanation of what they are being asked to do, why they are being asked to do it, and what the consequences are if they fail to do it. And that's simply, as a result of this judgment, not been complied with. A couple of years ago now, the Secretary of State gave an assurance to this House that individual job centres or job centre districts do not have targets for sanctioning job seekers. 
uh, and there isn't any kind of league tables that exist that rank job centres or districts for sanctioning. Can you just confirm that is still his department's policy? Uh, absolutely. Yes. There are no uh, league tables in place. We don't set targets. Uh, for sanctions. I've made that point uh, in previous discussions we've had, I think with the right honourable member for East Ham uh, most recently. Uh, the de decisions that need to be made are the right decisions. Uh, they need to be based on uh, whether people have breached the agreements they've set out with jobs, uh, Job Centre, uh, and there are no targets uh, in place. The judge said the information given concerning sa sanctions is unclear and opaque. If you want sanctions to work, People need to know what the consequences of their actions are. And actually, this is a debate about the consequences of the actions. And the government's consequences of its actions in failing to make sure that it complied with Section 4 of the regulations in every communication with, con uh, with claimants seems to me that the government should bear the consequences. And the consequences in this case is £130 million or up to that sum. And I think there is no question but that when someone does wrong, and let's be clear, the government has been found to do wrong in this case. It's not just an oh overlooked. It's a series of court judgments which say, in respect of individual citizens, they have been wrongly treated. Then the government must give them back their money. It's not the government's money, it is their money, because the government has wrongly kept it from them. And that is quite clear that it is what the courts have decided. And if the government is going to say, and I support it, that a sanctions regime is necessary so that people know the consequences of their action, it seems right to me that the government itself has to bear the consequences of its wrong actions. And it should not be coming to Parliament to ask us to give it a free pass for breaking the law, because that is what this bill is doing.